Welcome back. My name is Mark Anthony dubois -Jeneer. I was born July 4th of 1986. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Today, I want to talk a little bit about something about when I say that I let my dogs off leash and, and I put them in, a, in an area that for me, I want to make sure that this is very clear before anyone says anything to me. I do not set my dogs up to fail. I set the dogs up in a place that I know that things are going to be pretty good. And this is where I like to come. This is my first place I come. There's no cars within miles. There's no street around here. People yeah, here, come here somewhat. That's why there's rarely any like wildlife that come here because this is a very frequent area. But certain times of the day and certain days, this place is just completely dead. This is where, for me, I start to gain that experience of allowing my dog to have freedom. It's straight freedom here in reality. They can, they can go wherever. I mean, you have, my dogs even jump across and swim across this and they can go anywhere. But they don't because I started at home on making sure that I can simply have the dog like this with me. I always keep the leash on all the time. I never ever let a dog just off leash. I don't care if it's new at the house. A dog is always on the leash when I first get that dog because I want that dog to know, like here, here's our boundaries. You're staying, you're staying with me. You guys, are, you guys are hanging out with me. Once I can get them to hang out with me and be nice and calm, super chill, super relaxed, not all pushy and wanna go, wanna do this, wanna do that, then that's the moment when I'm like, I think it's ready for us to finally do something here. But I don't just to get a dog a brand new day one out of the shelter and just let it be free. That's foolish. That's not smart. That's not any, anything that anyone should be doing. You have to, the, the thing that I'm going to say is you don't have to do nothing. This is just what I do. I'm giving recommendations right now. But I just keep the dog on the leash for a very long time until I can go everywhere. E I mean, everywhere, everywhere with the dog just hanging out with me. The dog stays next to me. If the dog goes to the end of the leash, I, I start to use the leash at first and don't say any words where I just allow the dog to just bounce off the leash and then they come back on their own. When I really know when it's time for me to just say, you know what, I'm out here. I'm out in what I'm going to say is my safest place to be able to give the dog a real true sense of me understanding that we, I trust you. I'm here for you. And I say I, I stand from a distance. So right here, I like stand from a distance and say, hey, Kahi. I just say a name and they have to, they don't have to come into my front. They don't have to come to my side. They have to stop doing everything they're doing. So here, he's at the end of this leash and I, well, he already knows, but uh, he, he's not going to, that's why I love this belt, bungee leash. It's a different feel than when it's just a static solid leash because they have a little bit of a give, a little bit of a bounce to it. And it's just, I don't know what it is, but the dogs literally just bounce off it. And then they just, they just, they come back. It's like, it's a bouncing effect where they just know, okay, that's it. That's when I come back. But if I'm here and I have like that dog there where she's way at the end, so this leash is six feet plus another two and a half feet. So she's like eight feet from me when, when, when they're fully extended on what I got on them. So right here, like this dog is eight feet away. If I can't say something and get him to just be able to just calmly look at me, stop everything he's doing and just come to me, I do not let the dog off leash. But when I could just stand here and just hang out and see how my dogs are just hanging out, they're just relaxed, they're, they're, they're here. At this moment, I'm ready to say, okay, you guys can go ahead and go off and do what you want to do. Because I know that they are going to not just take off in a, in a, in a rage. I don't care even, because I haven't walked this dog here in, it's been, I think, three days. So we went out on Tuesday. Today's what, Saturday. I haven't taken him out here for, for a couple of days. And if I bring him out here and he's just like on a, because he, he, he a dog, he's a high energy dog. If he's on a rampage, I can't just take him off the leash and just expect that he's just going to listen to me. He's, he's in this like mindset of like, I'm, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And it's gonna be really hard for me to be able to get that dog to come back. So in reality, when I take this dog and, and if it's been a little while, if I take him every single day, he's, I don't wanna use that word perfect, but he's just like uh, absolutely amazing animal. If I take him every single day, I've been trying to not take him every day to see, this is where I guess I could test and challenge myself of how well is he listening to me? Uh, because the Dalmatian, she's, She's always by my side, basically, like 90% of the day almost. And, and he's not with me 90% of the day. He's with me for like 20, 30% of the day. So it's a big difference. And, and so I, I'm always testing to see how well is he listening. But when he's out here, when I don't bring him out, like today when we first got started, and I got to get someone with me to, so I can show you how he looks right out, right out of the van when I get here. He's he, he, he not like psycho crazy, but definitely when I get him out of the kennel at the house, he, ha he, he runs. He's got a little bit of a, he does a circle. He runs around in his little area and he's just, he, he's on an absolute rampage when I get him out uh, at, at the house. He, 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 he's got this like this initial burst. I haven't personally worked him through it because, you know, I, I got 
a, a luxury of I got the land to be able to allow him to do that. He's not going like 10 acres. He's going like the size of an average backyard. I just let him run it out. I don't say nothing to him. I don't do nothing to him. I let him potty. I let him run. I let him just run and run and do whatever the heck he needs to do. And then he's just like, oh, okay, cool. We're chill. And then uh, uh, we, I finally get him in the van and then we get out and then we get out here and we get to moving. And he gets out of the van a little more like, I got to do what I got to do. And I just stand there and I just wait. I wait. I wait, I wait, I wait, and I don't care how long it takes. If that means that I'm out and I got delegated an hour and a half, two hours to come out here and walk, and it's taken me an hour, hour and a half to be able to convince him to be able to get to, get to the point of being calm, that's all that we did that whole entire time. We didn't go for a walk. We just stood there until we get calm. And he, he gets there, and I would say, like, today, like, 10 seconds. It doesn't really take him too long because he understands that if he's not calm, we're not going anywhere. He just knows that that's just his, his reality of life. So I just stand there and I just wait for him to be relaxed because when he's not, there's no, there, there's nothing that I'm going to say to this dog to convince him to really want to come to me outside of using a whole lot of pressure. And that's the first start of I was struggling with, with when I had the e-collar on. I, he could be all excited with my e-collar on and I would just give him a tap, tap. And this dude, he would, <laughs> he would just stop. You just sit and lay there or do whatever. And he just quit. But for me, it was like a, uh, uh, a, a illusion. It was fake. It wasn't real. And, and what I was looking for is how to be able to actually really get him to relax. And, and I had to do it on his timeline, not on my timeline. And when I put it on his timeline, now he is on my timeline. And I don't really have to worry too much about what's going on. But the, the biggest thing that, that I'm always focused on all day, all the time, is for my dog to be calm. If my dog's not calm right here, right now, if I stop, and he's, because he's, he's going, he's like, I want to go. But, I mean, he's used, this is what's cool about right now, because they're used to just running off and doing what they're doing right now. But I'm purposely just keeping them on leash in an area that they know this is our freedom. Unfortunately, we're we're drying out. This what I'm standing in right now should be flowing with water right now. But uh, uh, they're usually running. So here I'm restricting that, and we're just gonna hang out here. When my dogs look like this, I can do whatever I want right now. I have the word that I want to use is I guess in reality the word to use. I have control right now because I can effectively communicate to them. But when they're in this rampage of just, just go, 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 sniff, 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 running off, running off, running off, you, there's no reason to even consider doing, in my opinion, anything at that time. You just got to stand still and relax and wait till that dog just stops doing everything that it's doing. Because here, he, they just go to the end of the leash and then they just stop. I do not care. This is the thing where a lot of people are just, I don't want to use the word picky, but I'm not as picky. I don't care if my dogs are not, so if I'm out here. If I'm in public in a situation where I'm downtown, there's people walking all around, yes, my dogs are close to me. But I'm not, I'm not precise on just going for a walk, say, around the neighborhood, that my dog has to be right next to me. I prefer that they're in front of, and ahead of me, but they cannot pull. They cannot drag me. They can give me a little bit of, because this why, again, I really like this uh, bungee setup thing, because they can give me a little bit of a pull, and, and it just springs, and they automatically bounce off of that, and they don't go anymore. And that's just learned through doing it over and over and over again. But the biggest thing that I'm always communicating to these dogs is you can go when you're basically standing here just as they are right now. They're not trying to pull me anywhere. They're not trying to drag me anywhere. They're not like overly excited. They're not like going on a rampage. They're not, they're, they're, they're just in a neutral stance right now of, of basically like, what are we going to do next? That's what I want my dogs to understand. That's where I'm going to say is I am that leader now. I'm not, okay, straight up, honest. I'm putting a lot of pressure and saying, you have to stay with me because I give you eight feet on this leash. That's my boundary I'm putting in. That's the force of dog training. You, no one can get, not no one, no, still, no one can get around that. You have to have something where you have to keep the dog near you to be able to work or do anything with it. It doesn't need to be a leash, but you're gonna be doing something to make sure that that dog is next to you. You have to have the dog close to you. If the dog is uh, uh, 500 meters away, you can't do nothing with the dog. You have to be able to get the dog close to you. But what, when the dog is close to me, that's when I'm worrying about what it is that I wanna explain to that dog. So what I'm explaining to this dog here is you can't go anywhere until basically I'm saying that we're going somewhere. And that's where I'm saying that I'm taking the leadership position. We're moving when I move. When I stop, we stop. When I move, we move. When I stop, we stop. We're just doing that over and over and over. And they're having to pay attention to me. They're not deciding when they want to move. So there's times here that you see the uh, uh, Kahi, my shepherd, he'll try to pull the, I want to go sniff this. No, no, man, you're staying with me. We'll go sniff this when I say we're going to go and sniff this. That's the leader. That's what I'm going to say is where a fair leader is going to go of saying, I see and notice that he wants to sniff it, so I'll wait, and then I'll go over there with him and say, okay, well, let's go ahead and sniff it, as opposed to just, like, 
like I guess the most ruthless way is just completely restricting it of saying you can't possibly do that. I'm never going to allow you to do that. I'm just going to wait. So it's like even like this second. This for me, I don't care. He's they're not pulling, but they're snug on the leash. So for my setup that I have, since it's just around my waist right now, I don't care because <laughs> it's fun. If you've never had a, a, a leash around your waist and just let your dog pull pull into it, it's actually a really interesting experience. It's really fun to do. But if your dog is it, it doesn't understand like how to stop doing that, and when you stop and they just still keep pulling, yeah, you can run into a sticky situation. But most cases, every dog I've ever done this to, they just stop with me. They may pull, pull, pull. Because like right here, he's pulling a little bit. They'll pull a little bit. But then they always just back out. They back out because it's cool about this specific brand of bungee leash. It has a lot of elasticity and it's really, really stiff when it gets really, really long. It doesn't get rigid. It, it'll get rigid after a while. They got to pull really hard into it to get it to go rigid, like just straight solid. But it's got so much. So the harder he goes, the harder that is pulling back at him, basically. And he knows, I, OK, I got to I got to I got to take it back. I got to take it back a little bit. So for me, in a setting, in a scenario like this, I don't care if they're snug on it, they're moving a little bit more, because it's just, it, 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 it's enjoyable for me to be able to do. But if, yes, I am walking downtown, the dogs, I'll, I'll reel them in, I'll actually just take the leash from them. I'll reel them in, and, and we're going to stay right here. So this is all that they have now. So now I'm holding this part of it where this is all a static line. So now when they pull into it, they're going to feel that initial, like, that, that shock is going to hit them. Like, they're just going to, we can't go, like, we're stuck. And this is what I, how I just maintain them if I'm walking and there's a bunch of people or dogs or, or anything going around. And they understand that. They have more freedom than they have times that you're just here with me. They're not fighting it. And in reality, at the end of the day, this having a dog here makes it much easier. It makes it much easier, much easier for me to communicate to the dogs. I don't know why, but it's easier. When they're eight feet ahead of me, it is a little more challenging. And, but when they're just right here in front of me, right in front of me, now, I don't want them to be next to me even, just right in front of me is where I really like them to be. Because I, uh, I don't know why, but I, it's just, I've been walking my dogs for a long time. But anyone that walks a dog a lot, they start to become in tune with no, understanding when we're moving and when we're stopping. And uh, uh, I don't know why, but it just makes my life really, really easy. Because it's like right here, this time, when because there's a person walking here, walk back and forth. Uh, uh, the Dalmatian, she, she's always like looking. She's looking. She always has this like, hey, there's a person. She just loves people. She loves dogs. She loves kids like crazy. It's, she just loves it all, which I believe gets a bad rep for a lot of Dalmatians because we're, we're restricting them from being able to do that. And that's where that said reactivity comes from because that overexcitement. They're overexcited. Then they start barking, whining, jumping, lunging. They start doing all of that because uh, I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen many Dalmatian videos now that they're just having those issues, but they're really like very social. They like to be around people type dogs. I mean, in reality, that's how they were bred to be around a lot of people all the time. And uh, uh, so she's always watching. And I never, ever, 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 ever restrict this dog from watching, looking, staring, and doing what it is that she's doing, especially my shepherd. I always make sure I let him look because it just allows him to be able to see, like figure it out what's going on and he's able to just get past it. So she's just like studying, she's studying. She's studying. So when she's here, this close to me, it's much easier for me to be able to convince her to just stay right here. But when I take some steps back, she, she has the, like more said freedom to be able to move. And it kind of puts her in a, I don't know, maybe she's the, uh, that, that's the part where I'll say dog, dogs can be opportunistic, where they're just like, well, you're not really listening to me. You're not really telling me what to do. So I'm just going to do this. But for her, she just hits the leash and comes right on back. Because she has times. I give her times that she can meet people and meet dogs. And then there's other times that she's just, we're just, we're here. We're hanging out. We're not doing anything. And then the people leave and she's just like, oh, hey. And then she's 100% focused on me. That's the part where I believe it challenges so many people because you want your dog 100% focused on you all of the time. You never want your dog to be able to have a chance to just, just look at something else or care about something else. I don't care. If my dogs want to go and play and interact with someone, I don't care. I don't, I don't look at it as... Now they think they're better than me and my dogs don't care about me no more. I just, I, I don't have any, any thoughts like that at all inside of me. I just, uh, my, many people, my dog wants to meet, my dog is capable of meeting when it's an appropriate scenario. Right now in this scenario here, it's not appropriate for her to just run over and meet that person because she's just walking and talking on her phone and doing what she's doing. It's not right for me to just allow my dog to just randomly walk up to random people. If someone, because I know the people that want to meet her, they, I mean, I just, because at the front, there's like a Boy Scout thing going on out here right now, bunch of kids, and they're like, oh, Dalmatian, Dalmatian, and, and they look directly at her, and I'm like, okay, you can go and meet those people, they clearly want to be able to meet you, and, and I don't care about that, outside of kids, I, I do ask, where your parent at, I need to hear a confirmation from them, I don't know why I do that, but it just seems right to me to do that, and, uh, 
Uh, so, so you can go meet all those people. But to someone that's just on their own mission, you're, you're basically never allowed to meet that person. You're never allowed to go around them because they, I don't know. We don't know. This isn't my world. I'm living in it, and other people are also living in it, and I don't get to control what everyone is doing. You may not like dogs. A lot of people are scared of this German Shepherd because of how he looks, so I just keep him away unless they say, come on in. And, and for me, the biggest thing is I don't care who they meet as long as they're calm. If they're like all excited, tail going too much, I always say, hold on a second, hold on a second. The dog stops, looks at me and says, okay, what do you want? Calm down. And then they can go and do what they want to do. Everything that I have been doing has been calm. The where I was messing up, I believe just me with my life and what it is that I've been doing, where I was messing up was I was say rushing things. I was getting my dogs excited to come out here, for instance, excited to let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then when the dog doesn't come back, when I ask them to, cause they're just running or go to sniff the next thing, I'm getting all upset. Like, come here, I told you to come here. But the dog is so in, I guess the words are being in drive, especially the shepherd, he can drive when he's just sniffing. Right now he wants to go and sniff, he wants to go sniff. And I'm just slowing him down, slowing him down, slowing him down uh, to say, well, you, you, you're, you're gonna wait a moment, just wait a moment. And uh, when he's so in drive to just go smell something, this dude gone. He's not listening to me. He don't give it. He don't. He don't care at all about listening to a single thing that I have to say. But when he's finally relaxed, man, my communication is like extremely efficient. Uh, it, it's not a hundred percent, but nothing is a hundred percent at the end of the day. I don't care even what kind of if you got the e collar on him or not. It's still not a hundred percent. There's times that I've tapped the button that just whatever because he brushed into something and the contacts moved or something and and he just didn't feel it. There's always room for. There's always air. But I'd rather have air in the sense of me being able to uh, 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 communicate to the calm dog. My error would be right now if he was too excited and just let him go and hope that my e-collar would work. No, I wouldn't do that. I would get my dog to be calm knowing that I'm not going to really run into too much air. I'm not going to have too much failure happen here. So I'm going to spend a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time on getting the dogs calm. Get them to hang out and relax. Getting them just be in an absolute open environment like this. We're just, this is my favorite place to let dogs off leash. I've done many, many dogs out here. It's a beautiful place to do, especially when there's more water here because it kind of makes it so they can't just easily run to that other side. It is beautiful here because the dog always, they run up and down this, this grab, this, uh, I don't know what kind of stone this is, but the rock here, they run back and forth. They just, they rip, they go insane. Then they finally stop and they come back and they're like, hey, and then at that moment, I just slapped a leash on the dog real quick. And then 10 seconds later, I take that leash off. And that dog, for the most part, just does this. They hang out with me. They're like, oh, thank you for that. And then we can move, move on and keep doing little doses of that day by day by day by day by day. And then at some point, one day, I'm cool with knowing that my dog is going to be okay being around another dog comes up here. Another person comes up here. So I don't have to worry about leashing them. I can just call them and they'll come to me because we're calm. When we start with that calm that it just brings an extreme, extreme amount of success. This is the part with me that I was struggling because I didn't have the said patience. I wanted to get out here and I wanted to just get going. I didn't have the patience of just like sitting down, relaxing, hanging out, just, just slow it down, just chill, just get the dogs calm. I'm just like, let's just get going. And that's what was ruining me because I would get out here and I would get my dog super excited, super excited. Let's go, let's go for a walk. And, and the dog just gets into this stance that it just has zero 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 cares to listen to a single thing that i have to say like zero and that's where the pressure has to come in because then it's like yeah i'll tap that button tap tap dog comes right back we're doing good then a dog goes off again super excited again that's the weird thing about you know I, I, different dogs different breeds different situations different applications i've seen e-collars and prong collars especially on these these specific dogs here these shepherds that it it, it, it energizes them it, it turns them on it gets them to like more uh, motivates them. That's the word to use. It doesn't shut them down where I know, I don't know for a fact, but based on how this girl is, if I did that to her, she would shut down. She would just like fold. She would, she would just be so, so emotional. She would just, she was shut down. But this dog here, he would just, he just goes. It's, it's, it, it's kind of, in, it's, it's interesting, but that's the differences of what type of dogs that we have. Whereas I've seen other shepherds that you, you, you slap a, a e-collar on and it shuts them down. But certain ones have more, it's the drive, I believe, because that's how my border collie also is. I put one on him for a little bit when he was, a, I think, like a year and a half, almost two years old. Uh, uh, and, and I tap that thing on it, it just energizes him. He's just like, oh, okay, know that? Okay, let's just go. Like, it, 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 the, the, the drive is so high that you're not just, like, correcting that out of the dog. You can't correct the drive out of the dog. 
I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You got to work with the drive and the dog. And how I'm able to work with the drive and the dog is to be able to get the dog to calm down. Once they're calm, it takes so much longer for them to get back into that high drive. If I'm just casually walking around in my neighborhood, casually going for a walk out here, doing what I'm doing, I do not want my dogs outside of this Dalmatian. She, I'll get video at some point. I got to get someone with me to show when she goes into drive. She only goes into drive when we're on this setup in this leash right now. I get to run it. If I'm walking or even if I'm jogging slow, she knows we don't, we're just hanging out. She looks like she looks like like 99% of the time. But when I go to running and, and, I, and I, I'm trying to cue her on a plastic bag sound to like really push her into drive, she goes into drive out here, but she's on this leash. She's never free, ever. She's never free and we're never just walking. We're running, doing something as she gets to go in the drive. And, and, and I'm able to get that by slowing down, calming down and relaxing. And now it takes a little while for her to actually even get into drive. I got to run a little bit, get her going, get her going, let her go potty, stop, do a little stretch, and then we can get going. And we get going, and we can go hard. We go hard. <laughs> she goes hard. It's so much fun. It's a little scary right now because I'm not fast enough to quite keep up with her because she could just drag me, man. It is, it is, it's impressive. It's really neat. But this dog here, I pretty much never want him in drive out here. Never. I never want him to be crazy like we're going to go bite something, we're going to go run and chase something. He's never allowed to do that out here because that can get not only just him in danger, me in danger. That's a dangerous situation to be in, having a, a, a high drive, high active dog just running a fool out here, just going after any and everything. I mean, he'd just be chasing it all. He's never allowed to do that out here. The only time that he's allowed to go into what I'll say is his hyperdrive because he's got one similar to her, but she pulls and runs. He sniffs and, cha and, and trails, like he'll sniff something out. He could do that at home when I set up a, a, a trail for him to be able to like find a chicken or find his food, basically. He could go he could go 100, and it's impressive. It's cool. I even got a video of that uh, months and months and months ago. It's really neat to see this dog go. He'll go. He goes, man. It's, it's really nice. But being here, never, he never, ever is he allowed to go into that high drive. That's dangerous, and he's for sure not going to listen to me, and if he is in that, I need, I definitely need something to be able to communicate, which would mean he would have to be on leash with me to be able to make sure that he can't get that far, or he would have to have the knee collar on. This is the part on how I've been able to get around that is get the dog relaxed. When they're calm like this, I don't care. I don't, everything's fine. I don't have, I don't have much of anything to worry about because even here, I just let this dude go. He ready to go. <laughs> I feel like I'm being a little mean because we always are free out here and you just let him go and he's just going to chill. What's up, bro? Oh, get my leash. You want to go too? You can go. Hold on. I'm uh. Now you can look at Ophie's face. <laughs> She's like, let's go. She's more than likely just gonna hang out with me. She doesn't really go too too far. <laughs> Kahi, if she gets on board with him, then she'll go a little bit farther. But for the most part, this dog just stays pretty close to me. She likes to follow where he goes. But this dog here, he just has a. I gotta go and sniff. I gotta sniff. So he knows that he can go, I don't know how he knows, but he goes so far, probably because of me just constant day after day after day, when he gets to a certain distance, I'll recall him back. So he just kind of hovers in this bubble. He, 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 he just never takes off. He's just never like completely gone to the point of, I don't know where the heck my dog is at. He just, he's close by because he's relaxed. But if I ever notice, this is the part where he had to say like earn this new freedom after I took that e-collar off of him because he, I, I would take, when I got the collar off, he would be calm. And then as soon as I would let the leash off and he would like say, did what he just did back there. He took off to go to that first smell spot. He starts to get back into drive. Uh, we'll be all right. Uh, Kahi, Ophi, come here. He'll, he'll start, uh, Ophi. He'll, he'll, he'll get back in. The, come here, girl. Hey, doing pretty good. How you doing? He'll, he'll do that first sniff spot and then he'll get right back into drive. He'll just be drunk. Cause like right there, if he went back into drive, he would have chased that dude on the bike. That's just who he is. It's what he's all about. And I'm actually surprised that she didn't even attempt to even try to go even, she don't flinch at stuff like that anymore. I don't, I've spent a lot more time with this dog though. I've spent a lot of time. The same time I spent with her is the probably the same time I spent with that dog and having him for a couple of years at this moment. And, uh, but uh, the biggest thing, he'll go back into drive. So he'll smell like he's smelling now. And then he just like builds and builds and builds and builds. And, and then he just is, he would go insane. And that's the time that e-collar, I would tap, tap, stop slowing back down. Okay, we're good to go. And he was fine. 
And, and I just had to keep doing that and keep doing that. And keep, I never got out of it. I'd go a week without having to press it and, and it was okay. Then it would go another week and, and it was okay. But when I took it off and that first week that I didn't do it, man, he started going. He started going hard. So he would be off leash and he would st- I would watch him build. And he would build and build and then bam, right back on leash. And then we would wait until he's calm. And then he would calm down and I'll take him off. And I just kept doing that. Every day I would just extend more and more and more and more and more. To the point that today I can come out here for, I don't know, the longest walks I really come out here and do is a couple hours sometimes. But I think the longest I've ever taken him out in this specific place is a good four, almost five hour stretch. I can go three, four, five hours with him just never going into that high drive anymore. He just understands I just stay where I'm at. Sometimes he gets super excited and, and I look at him and say, hey, Kahi, I may have to give him that reminder. But uh, it, it never gets to that point that he's just going absolutely insane. And that's the time that, uh, hold on a second. That's the time that I have to slow him down. I got to slow him down to the point that, hold on a second. This is going to be complicated to do real quick. All right, sorry. Got to do some duty do's. Okay. But yeah, he will get into in the, an extreme drive, and then I just have to stop him and say, "Hey, hey, hey, buddy, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that." And today, I'm able to just mo- mostly uh, just be able to say to him, I don't, "Let's stop. Let's let's hang out." And then he stops. I don't have to put the leash back on him. And it's just been time of just getting him to calm down, and calm down, and calm down. And and it's just a, a matter of uh, uh, being. What I want to say is just being patient about working with the dog and understanding that it, it could take more time depending on the dog. Each dog is just completely different. But the biggest thing I notice is I don't have like the I'm scared vibes, I guess I'll say, with my dogs at all anymore. Like even back there, I call an Ophie and she just, she 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 came back, but she still had distance. But I'm always never nervous about, oh my goodness, she's just going to go take off at this at this bike or go take off at something or, or Kahi's going to go take off at something. I'm never nervous of that. I'm, I'm, I am a little picky, I'm going to say, depending on the person and how I see them, to come all the way to me. But I believe at this moment today, I don't, there's never 100%, but they know the vibes that I'm giving that it's okay. I don't need you next to me. Leave that person alone, though. Don't mess with them. So there are certain times that they know you come to me, but I believe it's based on, uh, I know why, I, certain people are just scared of dogs. I could see it in the person like literally 100 meters out. I could see that you're scared. So I call my dogs and in most cases I'll leash them up just to make that other person have a little sense of safety so they don't run into that, I, I'm scared or whatever. Again, it's not my world, but certain other people just don't care. People, some people just don't care. That guy back there, he's talking to the dogs and he, I mean, I've seen the guy many, many times out here. And uh, uh, he, he doesn't care. So I'm not like, so you better, you gotta, you do this. And, and to me, that's the part where I'm going to say they just relax some. And you're going to watch how things are actually going to be very, very smooth for you. It's not going to be like this, this crazy disaster that, oh my goodness, my dog didn't come back to a perfect heel. And I got to, what am I doing? And what is wrong? It's, it's not that serious in all cases. In the certain cases where it is serious, leash the dog, leash the dog. Put the dog on the leash, have the dog close to you, make sure you've spent a lot of time on working with that dog to make sure that that dog understands how to be able to be calm with you. Just leash the dog. When I'm around cars, I leash my dogs. Uh, uh, unless there's a huge, like at least a 10 foot little easement type thing, I'm just okay, whatever. I don't, I don't really care so much. But if, I, if there's a sidewalk on a road, my dogs are leashed 100% of the time. When I'm in parking lots, my dogs are leashed. If I'm not standing like right directly by my van, on my van, then my dogs are leashed all the time when there's cars around. I'm leashed all the time when there's more than just a person around, there's a crowd of people, my dogs are always leashed. I have, I have leashes on my dogs all the time. Why? Not only just for their safety, but other people's safety and my safety. It's the safety of all. Now, some people, y'all try to push the dogs too hard on just my dog needs to be free everywhere. And you just may not have, I don't care how good this shepherd is. I don't care if he's at a perfect, because I've done this many times in public areas. I don't care how perfect his heel is. I'd have him off leash in a public area and people just get terrified. They just, <laughs> they're like, holy crap, there's a dog. I don't even care if I have him on a leash, they're still terrified, but they're even extra terrified when he is on le- when he is off leash. And it's just a public safety thing that I just do what I gotta do. And, and the big, biggest thing is people don't get so nervous when they get close to me because they see how calm they are. They're not like all jumping and sporadic and riding and going crazy and 
you know, because I, I mean, I walk a lot of these trails so much that pretty much everyone out here that, that does what they do, they all pretty much know me. But that bikes are so scared of dogs because the, the dog starts to chase the bike. Lots of dogs do that, but they see how calm my are. They're just looking at them like, oh, hey, how's it going? And they, they're, they're just, there's nothing to worry about here. But the biggest, the challenge is when the dogs are just in this, like, this, this craze mode of they got to go, 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 go. That's the main thing I work on, like, 100% of the time. And when I work on calm, I get a dog that I don't need to worry much about. They'll go off and sniff and do what they do, but they're always, always close by. They just don't get into sticky situations. They, they just, they're, they're, they're always fine because they, they know the difference when someone wants to interact with them when someone doesn't today. They know when a dog wants to interact and when they don't want to. They, they know. When the person is like, come here, come here, because I could be walking, they could be a little ahead of me, and the person walking towards me will say, hey, good girl, and they'll call them to her. they like, come here, come here, come here. So she knows. She'll always stop still. Now, both of them, Kahi rarely meets people, but she's cool at meeting people. And uh, 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 she'll always stop, look at me, is it okay? And then I yeah, go ahead. And then she just goes off and people could pet her and do whatever. And, and she's just having a good time. But when the person is looking like, Hey, leave me the heck alone. At that moment, she knows I'm just gonna, I'm going to stay away from you because my dogs for the most part, are ex you got something in your mouth, man, especially on the, hold on. Let me check this boy's mouth. You got something stuck homie? You got something? Good. You got it. Trying deep in my boy's mouth. I'm gonna see some cool teeth. He got he got scary teeth, but Johnny just has a big mouth. Kai, come here. <laughs> Kai, he got a he got big teeth. You get it? I don't want nothing stuck in your mouth, man. You just chew the chew the bone. <laughs> he got big teeth. Them teeth. He's got some scary teeth. When he like would snarl and show his teeth, it it is it's terrifying. Can't even lie that it's not. It's it's absolute terrifying. I can see why just a lot of people are scared of these dogs. They're they're they they are brilliant, especially like the 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 good high energy ones, man. They are they are tough. They're really impressive animals. And and they're just capable of being able to do a whole lot of very nice things. Because even here, he's got this is what I'll say is just the shepherd I see a lot of them do. There's some people over there. And he just looks at him. He's got to look at him. He's got to like, what's going on with y'all? But he's not, he's not in a, in a bad situation that he's like scared or frightened. He's just aware. He's like, there's people here. There's okay. Let me check them out. Let me see what's going on here. Okay. They're not doing anything bad or malicious to me. Let's just move on. Even if they try to run up to him and get in his face, he's going to walk away. He's going to completely walk away because that's what, at the end of the day, I show him time after time after time again, we don't need to go into a fight. We could just walk away. Be the, uh, uh, the bigger dog here and just walk away. So he never runs into issues. But it's just constantly doing over and over and over every single day. I work calm, 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 calm. And then when I get him calm, I give him... Wow, that's a big looking fish over there. Uh, when I get him calm... Hey, y'all should come and try to catch this. This would be an easy one to catch. <laughs> I really want to teach my dogs how to fish. They can how to really upgrade some survival skills like crazy. But uh, uh, I work on calm, and then I let them off leash in, in said like my backyard or like in a dog park area that's fenced in. I know that the dog can't just get too too far away. And then I I, I stand in the middle of that park. I stand in the middle of the backyard with the leash on. I wait for them to be calm, and then I call them. If they don't come, I just keep waiting day after day after day. At some point, someday the dog is just gonna come to you. And then I start to upgrade that experience to like, let's go to a place like this. This is my favorite. I don't know why this is my favorite place. I had real good success with, with every dog out here. They always run. They got this sprint, they sprint, and then they stop. They come back, they're like, oh, okay, well, that was it. And they go right back to calm again. Because so, I don't let the leash off unless they're calm. And then they just have a, a, a great life experience. And then after that, I give them a little doses of that day by day by day. And then we get to the point that we're pretty much at a stable level. Today, my dogs are at a stable level no, ma no matter where I go. If they get excited a little bit, it's never out of a scale of 1 to 10. It gets to like a 2. And then they just go back to just hanging out as completely neutral. And, and it's, it happens in a flash. So that's why I could take these dogs pretty much anywhere today without having to worry. Because they're never, they're never, never. But they're, they're just, not, they're not like enraged, crazy, I got to go run, I got to go sprint type attitude. They're just hanging out. 
and 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 when they're hanging out, I could do this for hours and hours. I don't need a treat to keep giving to them. I don't need toys to keep break sessions to them. I don't need nothing. I could just hang out like this because I do. I just come here and I just hang out. I just sit and walk and relax and go to the park benches out here, just sit and hang out. It's just nice to just be in the trees. And I just relax. And and this is, I spent a lot of time just relaxing. And then at her at the house, spent a lot of time relaxing. And it just creates a really, really nice, stable, calm dog that I don't need anything. I could do this for hours and the dogs would just continue to keep on performing without me having to like trick them into doing something. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, let's go this way. Let's see what this part of the trail looks like today. I might have to do a little bit of a little bit of running today. Get uh get this Dalmatian a little extra tired today. But I like running, so I put her on leash. And she's on harness and she's pulling. And uh, Kahi, he's just free. So Kahi's like my scout. He just runs up ahead and he lets me know what's coming. And uh, he'll slow down when someone comes, lets me know. He lets me know there's a dog. He lets me know there's a deer. He lets me know there's a squirrel. He lets me know everything. He's just, he's my dog that just clears the path to let me know what's up ahead. And uh, we just get to running and get to moving. And we'll do like on an average day. So I, right now, because it's so hot out, I only run them three days a week, sometimes two. And we're doing like six to eight miles. But I got to do sometimes just a little bit of run. Because you can see right here, right here, this Dalmatian. She's starting to get into that, hey, what's going on stage? She's like, got a little excited in the bushes. She definitely smelled something that's like, hey, what? Oh, where, uh, uh, uh. She definitely smelled something of, hey, what is that? What's going on? See, she's getting, she got a little, little up there. But she's able to just calm right back down again. She's all able to just relax. So I just stand here in reality and just kind of let her investigate it. She smells something that got her like, I want to go get that. But she just right back here, right back to calm, right back to hanging out. She went into it as fast as she got into it, as fast as she gets out of it. That's from just hours and hours and hours and days and days and weeks and months at this moment with this dog of just putting her in the environment and just hanging out and being and not expecting anything. Just knowing that at some point we're going to be able to just walk and hang out. Because I'm not, I'm not anticipating my dogs to just be this robot, dumbed down, have no expressions, have no emotions, have no nothing. That's not what I want. I want them to know that you can express that, but there's said boundaries, I guess I can say, with what, what we got going on out here. There's boundaries. We can't just do what we do. Hi. Come on, uh, Kai. There's, there's, uh, yeah, Kai. There's, there's there's boundaries of everything that we're doing out here. Cause even like right there, she's seen a guy again on his bike. He's just, uh, Kahi, he's just standing there, uh, texting away and she goes up and she just kind of like gives him a little sniff and then just mo works, walks right past him. Just walks right along. And, and there's just, she knows if you're, you're, you're paying attention to me, I'll pay attention to you. If you're not, ah, whatever, let's just move on. And that's just time and time and time again of just doing the same stuff over and over again. That's the part with me that I started to run into issues, I'm going to say, with that Dalmatian. Because I, I wasn't allowing her to meet people at first. And it was, I could just see it. It was driving her crazy. And, and so I started to just introduce some, but not all. And then now I just put it on her. Do you want to meet them? If they want to meet you, you can meet them. I, I don't care at this moment. But and, and it's really, really relaxed her down to just be cool around all people all around without having to go ex extremely wild and all anxious like because she just she likes people she likes to meet dogs so i give her that option not the way that she's pushing me around but for sure i'm pushing her around i guess i can say by saying you have to be calm if you're calm and that person's calm ready to meet you you could do what you want but if you're all excited sorry girl we're moving along and she knows that today she know because today she's getting really, really cute where she'll just get to somebody and just sit. And she just looks up and gives you these eyes like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? She just she's so polite with how she acts. And then sometime Kahi comes in and he's like, hey, I, I want to get a part of that. Uh, let's go this way. We're, we're going to run back. We're going to run back this way. It's a good two mile, two mile run this way. We're losing sun anyways. And uh. Uh, he'll come in and take a pet and run off again because he doesn't really like people all that much. 
but it's just, it's, it's doing stuff is the biggest thing that I'm at the end of the day going to have to continue to keep on probably saying at the beginning of the video, you got to do stuff to get, to get somewhere. And, and in reality, at first it's, it's kind of boring just standing around, just, just being places and just, just being around. Cause like even here, you, oh man, I, I can't really run and talk all that great. <laughs> I got run for maybe, I, I can't, I can have a dialogue. I can't just continuously keep talking because I have to like catch my breath again after a little bit. But uh, this is what a trail here that I take her on. This is one of my main running trails. My main running trails, she starts to know. We're gonna build up to like, let's go do something. But still, because she's off leash, she's not gonna be able to go to that full hardcore, let's go wild. Let me see if I can get her to, oh, come here girl. Let me see if I can convince her to, uh, uh, Ophi, I'm not walking in there. Yeah, see, this is this is because this is how I like her. I I like her so much when she starts to get into drive. Uh, 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 come on. When she gets into drive, because as long as we're headed straight on the trail, she doesn't do this right here. Where is she? She starts to like because there's like a path here. I don't know, more than likely deer or whatever. So she's trying to find it. But what she's really good at doing is uh, uh, uh come here. I'm gonna let you go ahead and run a little bit. See if you'll go ahead. Oop. See if you'll go ahead. But what she's really good at doing is staying ahead like this. Oh, there we go. Staying ahead like this, because here she's pulling. And this is what I want her to do when she's on this harness and then we're out about to run. I want her to pull as hard as possible for as long as possible. I want her to be able to run at least that 5K. I think anything more than that would be a little little rough for the this fast pace. I could say the sprint. That's what they call it. We'll do our distance runs. We're running like our 12, 15 mile runs, but we're running much, much slower. So she doesn't really pull too much in those because she just she's running with me. But for this specific sport of what I want to build her to is to be able to pull like crazy. Right now she's got a nice little snug, not too much. But what she's really good at doing, like that trail back there, she gets up to the point of smelling the trail. And then she's like, ooh, that's excited. And that drive starts to kick in. She's like, I can smell deer. I can smell a rabbit. And my best case scenario is like a squirrel runs in front of the trail. She doesn't chase the squirrel. She just runs straight on the trail. She just goes harder and harder and harder, waiting for like that next one. So she catches a scent and she's like, ooh, I smelt it there. Maybe there's another one up ahead. So she starts to just go crazy. I mean, she goes, it's intense how hard she can get going. And, uh, and I just run. And I let her just drag, drag me along at this point because I can't quite possibly keep up with her. But I don't think I'll ever be. That's the point of what it is that I'm doing with her. Because like right now, she's, she's, she's going. She's pulling, pulling. So she's got this little bit of a smell here. And we're messing up because we're only walking. When we get to running, she'll just she'll keep on cruising. But I'm giving her too, I guess the main thing is I'm giving her too much options right now. If, if I'm walking, she can get a sniff. But when we're running, I mean, we're running. I'm running probably about a, uh, if I had to put it in a, in a mile minute, we're running probably about a five, five fifteen mile pace. So that's what a 12, 11.6 mile an hour, 12 mile an hour pace is what we're doing right now. I'm trying to get faster than that. I'm trying to drop down to the 430 to the 420 pace. And uh, uh, I got to do my own training because she can already do that. I got to do my own training to be able to get there, but we're, we're getting there. And when we're running at that pace, there's no like what she's doing right now. We're just, we're running. <laughs> we're just at a complete straight, just going crazy. But she knows this, this is just the game that we do. And, and that's the part of what I want to say is what the, the, what the breed was made to do. Run ahead and get stuff out of the way. Don't go down the trail, but just get it out of the middle of the way. So if she sees a squirrel in front of us, she'll go and run it to make sure it's out of the way. And then we just go on to the next one. We don't go chase the squirrel. We just get it off the trail. So I literally started teaching her this on my driveway with the chickens at the house. Get the chickens off the driveway. So now, unfortunately, no chicken goes on my driveway, but uh, get the chickens off the driveway. And we just go, 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 go. And then we started doing that here. So she's, it's, it's really impressive to see when she's like going all out because she'll go all out. And it's, 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 uh, it, it, to me, it's fun to the next person. This isn't your sport. You're not a runner like that, but I could put, hook a cart up or something to get pulling. That may be fun for you, but this is just really fun to me to be able to run and run hard. I mean, run hard, hard, hard to the point that she just gets me so tired. And I'm like, dang, <laughs> dang girl, this is wild. But this is, this is what I do. Dogs are calm. Cause she knows she could pull on this harness. She she got a nice snug pull right now. Nice snug pull. So sometimes I do these walks to let her pull just to build up some muscle. But uh, she's got a nice snug pull. 
and we just we just go 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 and she knows she could do get into drive on this harness off harness off leash on the uh, flat collar uh, uh, hooked on that she's not allowed to go into drive we're just hanging out completely calm the entire time all right so i'm not going to talk but i want to show you what she does when we we get to running we're about to run we're about to run because she's getting excited we're about to run run come on girl you ready you ready you ready come on come on skid it I mean, we are running right now. This is my good five, 515 pace. I want to go much, much, much faster than this. But we'll run like this for about two miles today. She's not able to do three yet. But we are moving. <laughs> Kahi can't do this for no more than a mile. When we run, run, he doesn't get to come with. But she'll just drag me. She's just dragging me. Come on, girl, come on. Let's get it. That's how I work out my Dalmatian the best way. I don't know why this is fun to me. This is probably a nightmare to most people. 